Good day class, it's me again, Mr. Saganya Magudong, and welcome to our cookery class. Today, I will discuss lesson 2, cleaning and sanitizing kitchen tools and equipment. Objective, at the end of the lesson, number 1, the learner can identify types of tools, equipment, and parapelnalia. Number 2, the learner can classify the types of appropriate cleaning tools and equipment based on their uses. And number three, the learner can be able to select various types of chemicals for cleaning and sanitizing kitchen tools, equipment, and parapelnalia. Kitchen tools and utensils. Who among you are already familiar with different kitchen tools and equipment? Okay, it is good to know that some of you are already familiar with the kitchen tools and equipment. And it's okay if some are not. The reason why I've asked this question is because today we are going to determine and you will be familiarized with the different types of kitchen tools and equipment. But let me first ask you, why is it important that you need to know or become familiar with those tools and utensils in the kitchen? Anyone? Okay, kitchen tools and equipment which you use in cooking are all very important. First, because they can make or ruin your operation. And second, once that you are familiar with those tools and equipment, it helps you in the kitchen to perform and prepare food more efficiently. There are so many types of kitchen tools and equipment at home, in the market, and even at the mall. Being completely prepared with the proper equipment within the kitchen are the fundamental step to successful cooking, whether or not you're a professional chef or just a beginner. The kitchen tools and equipment commonly used in cooking includes the following. Cookware, kitchen utensils, measuring tools, kitchen knives, and kitchen equipment. So we divided those kitchen tools and utensils into five categories. And ang gagawin natin, hihimay-himayin natin ang bawat categories at aalamin natin ang mga examples at kung ano ang mga uses ng bawat kitchen tools and equipment. Let's have first the cookware. It means refers to the cooking pots and pans that are used during cooking. So meaning to say, cookware are intended to be placed on a stove or ranges and should be durable enough to withstand its usage. Here are the examples of cookware that we usually use in the kitchen. Number one, saucepan. It is a long handle that is intended to be used on top of the stove to cook food that requires boiling. It usually comes with lids. A saucepan excels at cooking anything that mostly liquid. This means that saucepan it is great for stewing, simmering, making soups, and unsurprisingly making sauces like pasta sauce. Second, stock pots. It is a large, deep, straight-sided pot for pressing stocks and simmering large quantities of liquids on the stove top. Traditionally, stock pot used to make stocks or broth. Larger part of the same shape usually has two handles close to its sides of the pot because it is designed for the cooks lifting it using for both for his or her hands. 
Number three, satay pan. It is used for sauteing food. Satay pan, it is similar in appearance to a frying pan or skillet, except that instead of the flared sloping side, it has straight side about 2 to 3 inches high, and it is used for cooking food over high heat. Number four, frying pan or also known as skillet. It is a pan used for frying, searing, and browning foods. Usually, frying pan, it measures from 20 cm in diameter to 22 cm. And it is flat pan with flared side and no lid. Number five, double boiler. It is a cooking utensil with two saucepans that fits together so that the contents of the upper pan can be cooked or heated by boiling water in the bottom pan. So meaning to say, in short, a saucepan with a detachable upper compartment heated by boiling water in the lower one. So usually ginagamit natin ang double boiler when it comes to, like for example, melting chocolate as chocolate ganache. Number six, food steamer. It is a covered pot with an inside strainer that is used to cook or prepare various food with steam heat. So in short, a food steamer is used to cook or prepare various food with steam heat by means of holding the food in the closed vessel reducing steam scape. Number seven, wok. It is a versatile round bottom cooking vessel originated in China and it is ideal for stir frying. Next is kitchen utensils. Kitchen utensils is a small handheld tool used for food preparation. These are the example number one, colander. It is used for washing food and draining liquid from solid food. So meaning, when you say colander, it is a bowl with bottom and sides holes that usually made of stainless, stainless steel or plastic. Number two, strainer. It is a small wire mesh bowl with a handle and it is used to drain liquid from solid food or to remove solid bits from a liquid. So again, it is a kitchen device that is used to strain liquids away from other ingredients, mostly commonly used for separation of liquids from solids. Number three, mortal and pestle. So this is the picture of mortal and pestle. When you say mortal and pestle, it is a kitchen instrument that are used to crush or mash spices and other food. So simply, it is used only for crushing and grinding ingredients into pine paste or powder. Number four, we have pastry brush. It is used to brush, coat, and glaze pastries or to put a grease on baking pans or baking sheets. So again, pastry brush is a kitchen tool which is intended for use with pastry. Number five, slatted spoon. This is the picture of slatted spoon. It means it is a large spoon whose bowl has several slats or holes for draining liquid from being ladled. So, meaning to say, in short, when you say slatted spoon, it has openings or holes in the bowl 
of the spoon which let liquid pass through while preserving the larger solids on top. Next, number six, we have whisk or wire whisk or sometimes also known as wire beater. It is a cooking utensil used in food preparation to blend ingredients smooth or to incorporate air into a mixture and in a process known as whisking or whipping. Again, when you say whisk or wire whisk, it is also known as wire beater. It is a kitchen utensil for whipping eggs or cream. Number six, we have panel. This is the picture of panel. It is a tool used to transfer liquid or fine grain substances into containers with small openings. So it is often used to pour liquid or fine substances and it can prevent spills from occurring by providing optimal control over the pouring. Number seven, we have the ladle. This is the picture of ladle. It is a long handled spoon used for soups, stews, and others. So primar primarily, when you say soup ladle, it is used for serving liquid-based food such as soup, sauce, stew, or beverages. Commonly, ladle shapes are round and oval with some utilizing pouring sprouts on the bowl e edges that allows a steadier flow of food from the utensils. Number nine, we have tong or food tongs. So this is the picture of food tongs. It is a kitchen tool used for gripping, holding, lifting, and turning food being cooked on the grills, ovens, or stove tops. So, in short, when you say food tongs, it is used to grip and lift objects instead of holding them directly from or with your hands. Number 10, we have grater. It is a kitchen utensil to grate food such as cheese, vegetables, and spices into fine pieces. Grater is also known as shredder. It is a kitchen utensil used to grate foods into fine pieces. Number 11, we have potato masher. This is the picture of potato masher. So when you say potato masher, it is a kitchen tool used to crush soft food, which include mashed potatoes, applesauce, turnips, carrots, or other soft cooked vegetables. So again, when you say potato masher, it is sometimes known as crusher. So basically, it is a food preparation utensil used to crush soft foods for such dishes like mashed potatoes. Number 12, we have chopping board. This is the picture of a chopping board. It is a kitchen tool known as cutting board used as a surface for chopping or cutting foods with knives. So again, when you say chopping board, it is also known as a cutting board. So the, uh, usually it can be made of wood, plastic, glass, or stone. So kung mapapansin ninyo from this picture, you will notice na may iba't ibang kulay yung bawat cutting board. The question is, why do you think cutting boards have different colors? Ano kaya ang purpose kung bakit um, may iba't ibang kulay ang chopping boards, especially sa mga food service operations like in a restaurants? Do you have any idea? Okay. The different colors in cutting board easily show which is used for preparing what kind of food, which rules out the cross-contamination. So, may mga iilang restaurant, nag, uh, or mostly of the restaurant, gumagamit sila ng color-coded na mga chopping board na gawa sa plastic. So, as you can see from the picture, we have yellow, blue, red, green, white, and brown. 
So sabi ko nga kanina, ginagamit nila base doon sa kulay ng chopping board yung gagamp- uh, paggagamitan nila na isang ingredients. Like for example, if they use green chopping board, para lang siya sa mga vegetables and fruits. Kapag blue naman yung chopping board na gagamitin mo, para naman siya sa paghiwa or paghati or pagchop ng mga raw seafoods and fish. Kapag red naman yung gagamitin mo na chopping board, it is just for chopping raw meats. Kapag yellow, poultry like chicken. Pag white, para naman sa mga dairy products like cheese and breads. Kapag brown naman po, kinagamit naman siya sa mga cooked meat. So again, ang reason kung bakit sila nagkakaroon ng color-coded is para sa tinatawag natin na food safety. Yung tinatawag na cross-contamination. Maiwasan na uh, magkahawa-hawa yung... Uh, like for example, if you're cutting raw food sa uh, ready-to-eat food na dapat pinapractice din even sa bahay. So maybe some of you sa bahay, hindi lang iisa yung chopping board. But paano naman po sir kapag isa lang po yung chopping board na ginagamit namin sa bahay? Well, actually, wala naman kaso kung isa lang yung chopping board na ginagamit ninyo. Uh, in that case, kapag isa lang yung chopping board, pwede naman na, like for example, uunahin nyo munang hihiwain yung mga gulay, yung mga prutas, bago kayo, bago nyo gamitin yung chopping board sa paghiwa ng mga raw meats or sa mga isda o kaya sa anumang karne. Pero of course, sabi ko nga kanina, because of the food safety, in order to um, avoid cross-contamination, much better na bago, after nyong maghiwa ng, let's say, gulay or prutas, hugasan ninyo ulito and then saka, nyo mag- saka kayo maghihiwa ng mga karne o kaya ng isda. Understood? Next. Number 13, we have cheese slicer. So, this is the picture of cheese slicer. It is a kitchen utensil used for slicing cheese quickly, neatly, and economically. So, basically, cheese slicer is for slicing cheese. And then, number 14, we have the kitchen chair. So, this is again the picture of kitchen chair are practical for opening pa- uh, food packages. So, kitchen chair is sometimes also known as kitchen scissor. So, ginagamit instead na, for example, sa bahay, base, yung mo- mostly of us, minsan nakakalimutan na natin, kapag nag-open tayo ng mga packaging or food packages, minsan ginagamit natin yung ating nipen sa pag-open ng isang uh, food packages. So, uh, again, in terms to food safety, uh, you have to use a right equipment or utensils sa pagbukas ng mga food packages. So, we need to use the kitchen shear or kitchen scissor. Next is the measuring tools. When you say measuring tools, it consists of a wide array of cups, spoons, timers, scales, and thermometers that are specially designed for use in the kitchen. So here is an example of measuring tools na usually ginagamit natin sa kitchen. Number one, we have measuring cups. Our kitchen utensils use primarily to measure liquid or solid cooking ingredients such as flour and sugar. So in short, when you say measuring cup, it is used to measure ingredients for cooking. Then number two, we have measuring spoons. So again, this is the picture of measuring spoon. It is the kitchen tools used to measure the amount of ingredients, either liquid or dry, when cooking. 
So basically, again, measuring spoon is a special spoon used for measuring cooking ingredients and, and it comes in a standard sizes. Number three, we have graduated measuring cup. It is used to measure liquid ingredients. It includes measurements made in cups, fluid, ounces, and milliliters. And then number four, we have weighing scale. This is the picture of a weighing scale. It is a device to measure weight or mass of an ingredients. So nowadays, in some of the restaurant or the food service operation, operation, they are using a digital weighing scale. Number five, we have kitchen timer. It is a device that can be set for a number of minutes that sounds on an alarm such as bell or buzzer when the specified amount of time has elapsed. So commonly, kitchen timer is used when cooking or baking para malaman ninyo yung oras na kung kailan maluluto yung isang dishes or yung mga baked products. Number six, we have the food thermometer. This is the picture of a food therm thermometer. It is used to measure the internal temperature of meats, especially roast and steak and other cooked foods. So, in short, again, food thermometer, aside from this picture, or shown picture here, so we also have digital food thermometer nowadays. So, ginagamit siya when it comes to uh, para malaman ninyo yung internal temperature ng isang uh, food or finished product in order for you to know kung luto or nasa tamang temperature of cooking time or cooking temperature ang isang ingredients. Next, we have kitchen knives. It is any knife that is intended to be used in food preparation. Here's are some of example of kitchen knives. So, common kitchen tasks of the knife is of course cutting food items to size, heating food of an open fire on a stove. Next, we have kitchen knives. It is any knife that is intended to be used in food preparation. Here are the different types of knives that we usually use in the kitchen and its uses. Number one, chef's knife. It is any device known as cook knives. This is all-purpose knife is used for a variety of cutting and chopping, slicing, and mincing. Usually, the blade of the sharp knife is normally about 8 to 12 inches long and few inches wide. Number two, paring knife. is a device used for peeling, slicing, trimming, and dicing fruits, vegetables, and cheese. A paring knife, its blade is about or usually about 3 to 4 inches long. Number three, we have utility knife. It is used for light cutting and slicing jabs, often on fruits and vegetables. A utility knife, its blade is usually about five to six inches long. Number four, bread knife. Is a device most often in the bake shop for slicing breads, cakes, and pastries. It is also used to cut loaves and crusty bread. Bread knife, its blade is about or usually 8 to 10 inches long. Number five, carving knife. It's a large knife that is used to slice thin cuts of meat such as poultry, roast, hams, and other large cooked meats. A carving knife is a knife with a long blade used for carving cooked meats into slices. 
Number six, we have ham slicer. The average size of this is about 9 or between 9 to 15 inches. It is specially designed to cut ham thinly. Again, ham slicer is a special type of slicer with a long blade and rounded tip. And it is designed again to cutting hams. Seven, clever knife. Is a knife used for chopping meats and cutting through bones. Clever knife is also or sometimes also known as butcher knife. It has a heavy rectangular blade used for most cutting and chopping. The blade is usually about 10 to 14 inches long. Number eight, boning knife. Is a device used to remove bones from cuts of meats. Boning knife, it has thin, flexible blades and usually about 5 to 6 inches long that allows feet to get, to get into small spaces. Number 9, filleting knife. This is the picture of a filleting knife. It is used to filleting fish. It has a thin, flexible blade which usually 6 to 10 inches long. Number 10, we have steak knife. It is a device used for cutting steak, chicken, and other main courses. The blade is about 4 to, 5, uh, 4 to 5 inches long and can be wide or thin, serrated or smooth. And number 11, we have sharpening steel. It is a kitchen device used for realigning the edge of a knife. Kitchen equipment usually refer to the larger items in the kitchen that handles the bulk of the preparation and cooking process. Here are some of the examples of kitchen equipment that we usually use in the kitchen. Number one, microwave oven. It is a cooking device that can cook or reheat food much faster than a conventional oven. Usually, the microwave oven, it is an appliance that uses microwave radiation for heating food. It heats and cooks food by exposing it to electronic radiations in the microwave frequency range. Number two, refrigerator and freezer. It is an appliance where foods are kept in cool temperature. Basically, ang refrigerator and preserves are the appliances na kung saan pwede natin i-store ang mga pagkain na di pa natin kailang lutuin agad tulad ng mga gulay, prutas, karne at isda. Number three, blender. It is an electrical appliance which has to wield whirling blades for chopping, mixing, or liquefying. In short, when you say blender, it used to grind semi-solid ingredients such as fresh fruits and vegetables into smooth puree. Number four, electric mixer. Is a food mixer powered by electricity and it is used for mixing and beating. As you can see from the picture, meron tayong dalawang klase ng electric mixer. This one is what we call a stand mixer or electric stand mixer. And then this one is the electric hand mixer. So, an electric mixer, it is a device for mixing ingredients. Basically, kinagamit natin ang electric mixer when it comes to making dough and butter sa pagbibake. Number five, we have food processor. Is an electric appliance 
with the interchangeable blade within a closed container into which food is inserted for slicing, shredding, mincing, chopping, pureeing, or processing at high speed. A food processor is used basically for chopping, mixing, and pureeing of foods. The number six is the copy maker. It's an electric appliance used to brew copy. Again, a copy maker is using for brewing hot copy automatically. Number seven, we have turbo broiler. These portable convection ovens include a large glass pot and a pan in the lid. The pan blows heated air throughout the oven, resulting in even and efficient cooking. So, turbo broiler is used to roast proteins such as chicken or poultry. The meat cooks in its own juices with no added cooking oil and in we can also use the turbo broiler in making fries with less pats. Number eight, convention oven. It's a thermally insulated chamber used for heating, baking, or drying of a substance and most commonly used for cooking. That is the end of our lesson. I just hope that you have learned something today for your assignment. Please do have an advanced reading on our next topic. Lesson 3, Cleaning and Sanitizing. And please do have review yourself about kitchen tools and utensils because we will be having our second quiz next meeting during our assess to learn.